Mic check, all right. Well, first of all, give it up for my boy, White Chocolate. That's my boy. Yes. Sweet. I am so excited to be here. We have a lot of special guests here. Um, before I get started, let me just see if you guys are with me. So clap once if you hear me. Clap twice if you hear me. Clap three times if you're ugly. Okay, right here. We know. Now we know. Now we know. Now, many of you... When he said played professional basketball, when I walked out here, a lot of y'all looked at me like I was a black smurf. Like, is that, is that black basketball? How many of you here have a dream? How many of you have a dream? Okay, everybody else want to go to jail. Okay, great. All right. How many of you believe it doesn't matter where you come from, what matters is where you're going? My oldest son, who's in college now, but when he was 14, when he was 11, he came to me and said, Daddy, Daddy, I want to play football. I'm like, okay, cool. I put him with these 14-year-olds. They went on steroids. It was just fried chicken, cornbread, and Kool-Aid. You know what I mean? Because if you want to be great, you want to hang around people that are better than you. My youngest son at the time was about eight, not into sports. He was into Legos. Everything is awesome. He's that brother. You know what I mean? He gets distracted. So I put him on special teams. Special teams in football is 22 guys trying to knock each other's head off. You know what I'm talking about, right? Across from him was a 14-year-old, six foot four, 200 pounds. I looked at my wife and said, baby, they're going to kill Silas. They blew the whistle. The guy took off. <gasps> His lips were so big, it looked like two pancakes fighting over syrup. <laughs> he hit Silas, and all I heard Silas say was, Daddy! I could only see out of one eye. I said, I know, but get off the field. He goes, Daddy! Daddy! I could only see out of one eye. I said, Silas, calm down. I squared his shoulders, I got his helmet, I pulled it to the front because he was looking through his ear hole the whole time. And see, if you want to do something big, you got to think big, you can't think small. My name is Melvin Adams, I'm from Houston, Texas, and basketball, I'm going to tell you a little bit about my life. I grew up in Houston, Texas. Now, this is high school, you know, when you play a sport, everybody wants to play on the varsity, right? Because if you play on the freshman team, the only people going to come to the game is your mom and your daddy. If you play on the JV team, your aunt and grandmother might come. But if you play on the varsity, especially the guys, because we get the letter jackets, we like, what's up? But because I was short in high school, they called me the minute man. So I was like, coach, put me in the game. He was like, in the minute man in the minute. You know what I mean? So I went and told all my homeboys. I said, guys, in the third quarter, I want y'all to stand up and say, put me in the game. So I'm sitting on the bench, third quarter camp. All my buddies stood up. They said, put Melvin in the game. I said, coach, you hear him? He said, yeah, I want you to go sit with him. I'm trying to win. I mean, it was hard. I remember going to the park. And if you play park basketball, the two best players pick the team. So it's about nine people. So this dude picked one, he picked one, he picked one. It was two people left. It was me and a blind girl. So they got together in a huddle. So I'm like, what the huddle about? Even if I can't play, I can see? But they picked the blind girl, but she had the best no-look pass I've ever seen in my life. So not only did I grow up with people telling me I was too short, I also grew up in poverty. I grew up in the hood. You know, if you black, it's the hood. If you Hispanic, it's the vario. If you white, suburbs. But anyway, I grew in the hood. <laughs> My mom worked three jobs, made $12,000 a year. We were so poor, we couldn't even afford the OR. We was poor. We were so broke, if you tried to rob us, you'd be practicing. <laughs> My mom was a typical black woman. I'd wake up every day, I'd be like, Mom, I ain't going to school. What time are we leaving? You ready? I'll be the car. You ready? <laughs> and if you're Hispanic, it's the chunkla. <laughs> And if you're white, time out, Billy. But anyway, so um, I grew up with all these different obstacles. I even had a hard time in relationships. I remember dating a girl in high school with a lazy eye. And every time I look at it, I'd be like, <laughs> <laughs> but that didn't even last long because I found out she was seeing somebody on the side. But anyway, there were obstacles in my life. Now, I could have made all the excuses because I grew up short. And let me tell you, my dad, my father was six foot six. My brothers are 6'8", 6'7", 6'2", my mother was 5'3", and my aunts were Ewoks on Star Wars, but I had a dream. I was the shortest, but I was also the cutest, word up. But anyway, what I'm saying, <laughs> with all those obstacles in my life, I could have made all, can I get that bottle real quick for me? I'll get all the, thank you, Selena Gomez. Okay, anyway, with all those obstacles, I began to shoot about 3,000 jump shots every day. I ran three miles every day. I used to drive my mother's car on a major freeway in Houston, Texas at 4 o'clock in the morning. I would open up the door, dribble the ball while I was going five miles an hour until I could do it going 10. Had an opportunity to go to college in California, and the gas prices were so high in L.A., the Crips and the Bloods was riding together. You know what I mean? <laughs> I got to go to college, got to be a two-time All-American. I led the nation in scoring my junior year. Got to go all over the world. Got to go to France. Bonjour, oui, oui, pipi, ha, ha. 
I got to go to Africa. <laughs> Africa. And I got to live my dream. My first opportunity with the San Antonio Spurs, we played the Chicago Bulls, and everybody knew Michael Jordan was back. He smelled like Ben Gay mothballs, but he was back. And I'm sitting on the bench, San Antonio Spurs, Michael Jordan is dribbling the ball, got his tongue out like. <laughs> he throws a look away pass, and I'm like, where is this brother throwing the ball? All of a sudden, this long-nosed, light-skinned black dude, Scotty Pippen, comes out of nowhere, grabs the ball, dunks it in. So I jump off the bench like, yeah, way to go, Mike, you the man. But I was playing for the Spurs. Um, I get in the game, I'm dribbling the ball. David Robinson sets the pick. I dribble off the pick, and guess who was guarding me? Michael Jordan. So I said I can do two things. I can pass the ball and get scared like, ah! Or two, I can take Michael Jordan to the hoop because Michael Jordan puts his pants on the same way I do. It may take him a little longer, but he does the same thing. You know what I mean? So I drive to the hoop. Michael Jordan elbows me in the chest. I shoot the shot. Ball goes in. I'm fouled. I'm pumped up because I've just hit on the best NBA player. I'm on the free throw line, shooting a free throw. Michael Jordan's on the right side talking about my mama got a mustache. <laughs> that didn't make me mad. What made me mad was he was lying because my mama got a goatee. But anyway, that started something in my life. <laughs> that if you have a dream and if you work hard, dreams do come true. I'm going to give you an example. Let me get my man Porzingis. Can you come? Yeah, come here. Yeah. 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 Okay, um, let me get, um, you know you're tall when you wake up and you see the Lord. Anyway, uh, let's just got this brother. Okay, can I get, can I get the, the, the black girl with, yeah, 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 yeah. Nicki Minaj's niece. Uh, let me look over the scene. Um, can I get, it was a girl, young girl I saw walking in here. Oh, right here, can, right there in the red, yeah. Dora the Explorer, come on down. Yes, we love you. Love your work. Nick Jr., you are here, girl. All right. All right, I need one more dude. Uh, Dora, give me some, Dora. Swiper, no swiping. Uh, let me see. Um, I need one. Okay. Can I get the guy right there with the afro? Yes, yes. A white dude with an afro. You know something. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to teach, let me rephrase, I'm going to attempt to teach these young people how to do some tricks, all right? We always let girls go first, because if you don't, girls get mad, like, rah, rah, you know what I mean? But if you give them some chocolate, they'll be cool, like, is that Hershey's? So we're going to get the two girls, Dora, how's Diego? He doing all right? Okay, she right here, okay. Okay, Nicki Minaj, you're going to come right here. <laughs> uh, Napoleon Dynamite, you're going to come right here. Yeah. <laughs> And <laughs> hey, if you ever get in trouble, don't run to your grandmother's house. Hide in his hair. And it smells like Pantene. But anyway, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do these tricks for not just one person, but two, three, and a half people. All right? And I have two rules. Rule number one, you see anything you like, you clap. Rule number two, you see anything you don't like, you still clap. Cool. Now, I was watching all of you girls, and all of you girls are beautiful. <laughs> Tell me something I don't know. But all you girls have hands, not just to slap your brother every now and then. But you have hands so you can catch the ball. Because most girls will just sit there like, ah! it's just a ball. This is not Miami. You're going to be all right. Now, what I want to share with you before I do these tricks is that I was talking to Mr. Bartz. That's Peter Parker. I'm Peter Darker. I told him. When my oldest son, who's a freshman in college, when he, was a, when he was in kindergarten, when he was in kindergarten, there was a guy named James Dobson who was over a ministry called Focus on the Family. He said something very unique. He said, 87% he said, of young people across the world, 87% don't even go to church. My son was in kindergarten. He said, by the time my son is a senior in high school, there will be 1%. But yet, the church keeps doing the same thing, trying to get different results. Stevie Wonder can see it don't work, but we keep doing the same thing. So I hope as you listen to me, especially the teachers, listen and watch what I'm doing. This is the technique. You'll understand everything when this all thing comes close to the end, all right? Now, your name is? Ella. Ella. <laughs> she said it all smooth. Ella. <laughs> so, Ella, I'm going to do a trick, right? And then you just have to do what I do, and we believe in you. All right, Ella, so you got to get your hands ready. The ball is coming. If it hits you, I'm going to laugh, but I'm going to help you. You know what I mean? So, Ella, what you going to do? Go around the waist, this leg, here, here, here. Ready? Okay. All right, Ella, here we go. Ready? Go. One, two, three, four, five. You 
got it, Ella. Go on, Dora. Look at you, girl. Then that leg. There you go. Then you're going to fake the pass. Okay, that was good. You scared me. That was good. Then you go kick it. Good job. Good job. Yes. Give it up for my girl, Ella. Yes. Good job, Ella. You can say that. You did awesome. Ella. 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 We loved you on Nick Jr. All right. This is Aaliyah. Aaliyah. Mm -hmm. Aaliyah, you're going to do the same thing. It's going to be a little different, a little easier because you are the woman superstar. All right. So, go around your waist. This leg. This leg. Here. There. Here we go. You know it's hard when they laugh. <laughs> so, you go around the way. There you go. Go on, Nicki Minaj. Okay, cool. Then around that leg. There you go. Then the other leg. Yeah, huh? Yeah. Then you're going to turn sideways towards your boyfriend. How you doing? What's up? Okay. You're going to raise your right leg up. Other right. Okay, let's talk about drugs. Okay, uh, yes. Other right. Other, yeah, there you go. There you go. There you go. Yeah, you're going to hold it with this hand. Uh -huh. Your nails look good. Okay, so um, you're going to hit it to me. Don't kill Justin Timberfake. Okay, here we go. Nice. Nice. Good job. Give it up for my girl. My boy. What's your name? James. <laughs> James. <laughs> James, James, really the trick, James. What you gonna do? Go roll it here. Round the back. James, James stop shaking, man. Back. <laughs> <laughs> James, white people turn red, blacks turn purple, but we're all the same. Here we go, James. You got it, James. You're gonna roll it here. Nice. There you go. Then round the back. Oh, okay. Then off your knee. All right, player. Then off the foot. James. Okay. Then round the back. Uh oh, you do it. Okay. Then off your elbow. Shake! Nice, good job. Give it up for my boy James. Yes. This is Bryson. Bryson. You sounded like Chewbacca. I didn't... <laughs> Bryson. <laughs> Bryson. Okay, Bryson. Bryson, really the trick. Bryson, what you gonna do? Go bounce it. Catch it. No, we can't do that. If it gets in Bryson's hair, we're gonna lose the ball. So, uh, Bryson, what you gonna do? You're not gonna do that. You're gonna turn towards. Stone Cold Steve Austin over there, not now. But when you're about to do your trick, round the way twice. So Bryson, you're going to turn this way. Don't fart, because we don't want to hurt the 21 Savage's nephew over there. Here we go. Yeah, round the way twice. <laughs> don't fart. Here we go. Yeah, here we go. Don't fart. Good job. Yes, give it up for my boy, Bryson. Yes. You're my hero, Bryson. Now. Mr. Barts told you, had an opportunity to play in the NBA, been on the Globe Trotters, been on BET, Comic View, HBO Comedy, Oprah, kind of lived the dream. If you read my bio, you go, wow, that's a great success story about a young black kid who grew up in poverty who made his dreams become reality. But let me tell you the true story about my life. First of all, let me tell you about my mom. This was my mom. If I got an 89, my mother would cuss me out because I should have got a 90. If I got a 90, she'd cuss me out because I should have got a 91. And if I got a 100, she wouldn't say nothing because that's what I should have got. I played football, scored four touchdowns. My mom said, you would have had five if you wouldn't have fumbled the ball. So you want to know why I shot 3,000 jump shots every day? You want to really know why I ran three miles? Because I thought if I could score more points, if I could make more money, maybe my mother would love me more. She grew up as a kid, my mother never told me she loved me. I never heard that. It was actually 18 years ago was the first time in my life that I ever heard from my own mom that she loved me, right? My dad was a cop. He was a cop. And he would come home and he would hammer six nails on a piece of wood. He would turn the sharp points. He'd beat my mother. He'd beat my brothers. And then he would beat me. And there are many times my dad would make me watch him, make my mama get on her knees on a gravel street, and he would beat her with a water hose. And as a kid, I was coming to school like you guys every day. But I was angry. I was mad. I was always in in-school suspension, out-of-school suspension. I hated authority because every authority in my life let me down. But there were two teachers, like the teachers here at your school. They didn't just come to school to get a check. They came to school to change lives. My high school principal, her name was Miss Eaton. She would tell me every day that I was awesome. Now, you have to understand culture, because most black kids in the hood ain't walking around going, hey, Leroy, you're awesome. But she said it so much, I started to believe it. She said I was amazing. I said, I'm not Spider-Man. She gave me my first birthday party, and I went from making all Fs to being on the honor roll to being the first one to graduate from college in my family. My high school coach, he drove me to one of the richest areas in, in Houston. The houses was as big as Bryson's hair. And he said, you, you're talking about I grew up as a kid growing up around prostitution and drugs and gangbanging, and that's all I thought I would become. 
He took me out of my environment. He said, you can live in a house like that. And back in the day, there was a TV show called MTV Cribs. I was on the show twice because a high school teacher told me I can do it. And I said to myself, if I really listen to these teachers, if I really listen to these people, then my children won't have to grow up like I did. They'll grow up in a better neighborhood. They'll go to better schools. They'll talk different. Father, father, <laughs> were you poor, father? Did you eat the government cheese? Were you constipated? Were you a Negro, father? It changed my life. I retired from playing professional sports and I started speaking in public schools all over the world. And recently I went to a town called Harlingen, Texas. It's 99.9% .9 Hispanic. And I'm right there, there you go. There you go. One dude, George Lopez's cousin. Orale! He's here. So I wake up every day that I wake up. We're talking about walking with Jesus. Every day I wake up, I wake up to inspire people. Now listen, all of us are different. Loud people want quiet people to talk more, and quiet people want loud people to shut up. And everybody's trying to make you be who they want you to be, but you need to be who you are, because who you are is awesome. Some of us are loud, some of us are quiet, but it should be something about your life. Without even saying the word Jesus, it should be something about your life that people are drawn to you. I go to this school, Harlingen, Texas, and I don't know about you, I, I came to the school, I didn't come here for you to serve me, I came here to serve you. I started giving you names, giving people high fives, all of that junk. Don't know none of these people, right? I go to school, and I'm opening up the door, these little elementary school, they were coming up, so I was opening up the door. I don't know these kids. I'm like, hey, what's up, Dora the Explorer? Swiper, no swiping. I open up, hey, what's up, what's up, uh, Justin Bieber? Never say never. <laughs> And the secretary, I mean, the, the, the security guard goes, hey, you need to um, go talk to the, uh, the counselor, I mean, the secretary, because you parked in her spot. And I, I don't like letting people down. So I walk in, and I go, hey, ma'am, I'm so sorry I parked in your spot. And she had an attitude, like, early, who wakes up with an attitude? Like, she was like, Shanae, <laughs> Medea's niece. And so right at that, that the time, another lady comes around the corner. I go, hey, what's up, Charlie's Angels? How's Bosley? She had more teeth than a dentist. <laughs> and the secretary looks at me and she says, you know what? You're a little over the top. You need to calm down. I go, wow. Okay, I waited till the bell rang. And I walked up to the lady. I said, hey, listen, I'm going to be speaking to the kids, kindergarten to seventh grade. If you don't have time, if you have time, why don't you come hear me speak? She goes, if I have time. <laughs> so I speak to the kids like I'm speaking to you. At the end, there was a seventh grade Hispanic girl. She was real skinny. She could hula hoop through a Cheerio, hang glide with a Dorito. And she comes up to me, tears in her face, crying. She hugged me so tight. I got to be honest this morning, I farted. <laughs> it was that tight. She gives me a note and she says, when you read this note, know that you changed the note today. And she walked away. I said, okay, Selena Gomez, sorry about Justin Bieber. Keep your head up. So me, the principal, and the secretary are walking through the school. And right before I'm going to, the, to get on my flight, she goes, why don't we go into my room and let's read the note. We go in the room, read a note. The note says, my dad left me two years ago. I wear big clothes because I cut myself. My mom goes out every week and gets drunk, and many of those men that she brings back have molested me. So tonight I'm going to take some pills, and I'm going to end my life because my life sucks. And I looked over at the secretary, and I said, that's why I'm over the top. Because it doesn't shock me to come to King's Academy and think that all of you guys, you may drove here in a Lexus, but you got $2 worth of gas in it, but it looks good on the outside. Because that's what we do. We spend money we don't have to please people we don't like. That's what it's all about. And I stopped by here to tell you today that you young people, you are amazing. At my son's middle school, he's in high school now, they, they gave me my own room. You're talking about impact and walking with Jesus, impact, they gave me my own room. They said, you know what, when you're here, when you're in town, can you help some of the kids that need a little bit more love? I said, cool, they gave me my own room. And there was a new kid in our school, and this kid's name is Zach. And Zach is a kid that's almost in every school. He, Zach may be here today. Zach was a kid who wore a hoodie, had the earplugs in. And there's a group of 600 students, but you can all still feel alone, even though there's 600 students here. There'll be a group of kids, and Zach would be way in the corner by himself. And he's walking to the hall. Nobody wanted to hang with him. So he comes to my classroom. I go, what's up, Zach? What's up? And I go, Zach, before you come to my room, you got to read what it says on the front of my door. And you can tell he had read it before, and he just goes, nothing but positive attitudes enter in. Put his head down. I said, go, Zach, you got to give me something. before You, you got to give me a smile or something. And Zach goes, puts his head down. He walks into the room, he goes way in the back. And how I start my class off, I don't start it with a mask, but I start it with a block. And on this block it says, I am destined for greatness. 
So I'll read it and I'll give it to the, the student and they'll read, I'm desperate for greatness and give it to you, I'm desperate for greatness and so on. And when we got to about the seventh kid, Zach in the back raised his head and had this look on his face like, did I just join a cult? When the block got to Zach, Zach looked at the block, he looked at me, he looked at the block, he looked at me, and then Zach asked a question like many of you may be asking today. Am I destined for greatness? So all the kids thought it was weird. They started looking back and going, no, Zach, you're the man. Your mom was a terrorist because you're the bomb. You know you're awesome. This went on September, October, November, this past December when the block got to Zach. Zach stood up, raised the block in the air, and I ducked because I know the signs. You know what I mean? I'm from the hood. You know what I mean? You know. And Zach yelled out, I am destined for greatness. I am destined for greatness. Zach went from being the most unpopular kid to being the most popular kid in the school. Listen, I don't know about you kids. Maybe you go home. Maybe your mom and dad have gotten divorced. Maybe you're seeing some crazy stuff at home, and you're coming to school with a fake smile, and you're hurting. I stopped by today from Houston, Texas, where it's so flat, you can see your dog run away for two weeks to tell you that the world is a better place because you came here today. You have awesome teachers here who love you. You got Katy Perry over here, Stone Cold Steve Austin. You got George Bush over there with the khakis on. You got Adam Sandler right here. Come on, man. You got all these... Great teachers here who love you. And I want to tell you, I came home when I was in fifth grade, because I want to say something to you girls. Listen, you girls are beautiful. When you wake up every morning, you need to look in the mirror, and you need to talk to yourself. Like, sometimes you need to lie. Some days I wake up and go, I look real tall today. <laughs> if you're a girl, if you're white, you need to look in the mirror and go, oh, my God, I'm so amazing. <laughs> if you're Latino, orale, viva la raza, muy, muy bonita. <laughs> yeah, if you're a black girl, hey, for real, though, straight up, hey. And you look in the mirror and you talk to yourself. Right? When I was in fifth grade, I came home, I saw something that would forever change my life. My mom's back was broke and she was bleeding. And from that moment, I started writing poems to my wife. I wrote poems to this woman I never met. Poems like, where you at? I miss you. I'm cuter than Bryson. I mean, there are poems. And I came home after my first year with the Globe Trotters and I'm signing an autographs. Sonia, that's my wife. My wife is so black, she can put her fingerprints on charcoal. You know what I'm talking about? You know you black if you can wear yellow lipstick and look like a cheeseburger. You know you black if you can drive a motorcycle and get pulled over for windows through tinted. But my wife is fat, P-H-A-T, pretty hot and <laughs> tempting. And I'm signing autographs, and Sonia, my wife, walked by, and I said, the Lord is my shepherd, he know what I want. And I followed into this Barnes & Noble, and I started talking to her. I was like, hey, do you have a boyfriend? She said, no. I said, how long have you had that problem? Don't settle for a kid's meal when you can get a value pack. Don't get a hamburger when you can get a Big Mac. <laughs> After she slapped me, uh, she gave me a phone number. She was different than any girl I've ever dated. She'd walk into a room and it was dark and there was one light on her. Actually, it was like two because she real black, you know what I mean? Like, and I began to realize she was the one. So I retired from playing professional sports. I took her to a beach in Galveston, Texas. And listen, our beaches are nothing like, y'all beaches are awesome. Our beaches are so dirty, I used to be white and I swam in that water my whole life. I baptized the baby in Galveston and he died. I mean, that water is nasty. <laughs> I put a white piano on the beach, got 11 of my best friends, gave them all white tuxedos, gave each of them one white rose, and as I played her song, each guy brought a rose. Can we turn it down? You know, black people got that built-in mic. Um, got 11 of my homeboys, gave them all white tuxedos, gave each of them one white rose, and as I played her song, each guy brought a rose. We took a helicopter to a tall building downtown Houston. I had a table set up. She liked Subway sandwich, six-inch turkey on wheat, everything but bell pepper. She liked her coffee, black like her man, one equal. I know my girl, you know what I mean? I put the ring in the sandwich, she didn't eat it, but she said yes. So the next day I took it to the movie. About 3,000 roses while I went for the movie to come on, all these guys started bringing the roses. I said, hey, who gave the roses? Was it Bryson? Because I know he was checking you out. I act like I was mad. I walked in front of the movie theater, I grabbed the mic. Now, I've spoken in front of 8 million people. I don't get nervous. But I was sweating like Mike Tyson in a spelling bee contest. I mean, I was nervous. <laughs> I said, I want to thank my girlfriend, my fiance, for saying yes. It's been 20 years, 9 months, about 9 hours. 14 minutes by 12 seconds, nobody's counting. When my wife was pregnant with my oldest son, I used to go by her stomach and I used to pray for it every day. My son's gonna do something great. He's gonna do something great. My son graduated in a class of 936 students. He was number 78, had a 4.6 GPA. Amazing. My youngest son, pray for me. Uh, but anyway, um, <laughs> he got the character award in elementary. He got the award in third grade, got the award in fourth, and got the award in fifth. And I stopped by today just to tell you this. Listen, I want, I want you to do something for me. I want to dare all of you here today 
to be great. Because when God looks at you, when you came into the world, breathing, push, <laughs> he saw something great. You're going to do something great. But, but the dare is every day make a decision. Decide not just for today, but for the rest of your life that you're great. Aspire. Because there are people watching you. Whether you know or not, people watch everything you do. You can say whatever you want, but they watch you. Aspire to be great. Recognize that you're great. And then the E is expect great things. Listen, I want to dare you all to be great. I'm going to be hanging out with you guys today for uh, lunch. And then if you have Instagram, I got Globetrotter Melvin. You can follow me on there. Thank you so much. Appreciate it.